Greetings, Earthlings. Continuing on this series of rules explanations, I'm honestly surprised at how well the first one is performed, and seeing that this has been helpful for some is pretty awesome, not gonna lie. I, uh, I started this channel just for the hell of it, and just for fun, and I'm glad to see that some, like, there's some that share opinions, or that I can start debates. Like, the, the brilliant thing about this game is that you can debate with people, there are some who take it way too far, but, like, <laughs> you can, yeah, it's, yeah, words. So, today I'm going to be discussing another ruling that can really screw with people, and up until recently, I had it greatly misunderstood, and that's replacement damage effects. What am I talking about? Cards like Fiery Emancipation, Angrath's Marauders, and Torbrand Thane of Redfell alter the damage that your sources deal by either multiplying it or adding to it. So let's jump into this and figure out how all of this actually works. Spoiler alert, math. So, to start off, how do I identify a replacement effect in the first place? Well, it's actually a lot simpler than you think. Any cards that read instead is considered a replacement effect. That's it, video's over, you can go home. What, you're still here? Okay, cool. So, <laughs> what can get confusing though, is when the replacement effect comes into play, and how does it interact with the board? It could be pretty simple, right? Have a fiery emancipation on board, swing it with a 1-1 one, one, and triple that damage to 3. But what if you have multiple instances of damage replacement effects on board? Well, unfortunately, unlike most effects and abilities, it's not the active player that gets to choose the order of the replacement effects. No, instead, it's the player whose field or life total is being targeted. So, let's play the same scenario, but this time we have Emancipation and Grass Marauders and Torbrand on board. If it were up to us, we'd want to go Torbrand, Marauders, then Emancipation to maximize the damage. So we'd go from 1 to 3 to 6 to 18. But it's not up to us. So instead, the opponent would likely order it Emancipation, Marauders, then Torbrand. Usually you want to go highest to lowest. So it would go from 1 to 3, 3 to 6, then only 6 to 8. Right? Pretty simple. Your opponent gets control over how your damage is multiplied. Cool. Now where this can get confusing is if said opponent is also running their own replacement effects or damage prevention effects. An example is, say you have the same layout of cards, but your opponent has Valkmira Protector Shield. Even though they are known more as preventative effects, they're still treated as replacement effects in the whole grander scheme of things. So, let's run back the original damage stack of your 1-1 one, one being multiplied and increased. How would these cards interact with all of that? Well, because your opponent has control over which order the replacement effects happen, they could choose to have Valkmira take effect first, which would then stop all of the other effects because now it'll be seen as zero damage, which is considered no damage at all. Not to mention multiplying zero just gives you zero. But how does this work? Well, replacement effects don't alter the damage that is going to be assigned. It alters the damage that is assigned once it is declared. So when you're attacking with your 1-1, one, one, that's only one damage being assigned. Then, state-based actions check that conditions are met before the replacement effects can take hold and alter your damage output. But because Valkmira is also a state-based action, which, as we covered in the priority video, they all check the state between actions regardless of priority, then it nullifies the one damage that was assigned, negating any further damage multipliers. Which brings me to my next point, Trample. Up until recently, I believed that Trample damage worked differently than what it does. I believe that if you trampled over lethal damage, that the total damage you deal would be multiplied, then multiplied again once you trample to the player. For example, I play an Illhark the Raiseboard deck. In an episode of Rapid Before You Tap It, I played him in a game where I attacked with him and cheated out in Grass Marauders. Because of how I thought the rulings were... Why don't I just... Yeah, here. It trampled. Yes. It be yeah. doubled. Yes, so... No. Five damage is going to go over, so you're going to take ten more. And then, yeah. No, more than that, because it's going to deal hits. It's going to deal double damage to the creature. So it'll deal 
12 damage. Oh, to you're right. Okay, so it's going to deal 12 so damage to the creature. Go over, so t an extra 22. 22. So you're taking 44 total. Yeah. I'm doing... Now, if that were the case, that's pretty broken. But I'd been wrong this entire time. How Trample works with damage replacement effects is as previously mentioned, the effects don't alter the damage to be assigned, only the damage that is assigned. So therefore, in a state where you are attacking with a 6-6 Trampler and your opponent blocks with a 5-5, because damage is all assigned at once, you have 5 damage marked on the creature and 1 damage marked on the player. Now, state-based actions take effect, and your replacement effects will see where the damage is assigned and behave accordingly. So instead of it going 6 times 2, then 2 again, it would go 5 times 2 on the creature, then 1 times 2 on the player. And again, if you have multiple replacement effects on board, your opponent chooses in which order those take effect. For instance, let's use the current example and the previous Valkmira. Because of how Valkmira is worded, it would prevent one damage to both you and the blocking creature, changing how the replacement effects would take hold. Because the card says if damage would be dealt to you or a permanent you control, those would both take effect. So if we take this into consideration, your five damage is assigned to the creature that would be reduced to four, and the one damage assigned to you would be reduced to zero. So therefore, the creature would take 8 damage and you would take none. As by the time the replacement effects take control, the damage is already assigned and cannot be altered. It doesn't magically mean that your creature suddenly has 3 damage to trample over because it's only altering the damage assigned, not the power of the creature. Which, that is important to clarify. It is not altering the power of the creature. So if you're swinging in with a 6-6, and by some chance, something gives that creature minus 6, minus 0, then it will deal no damage, regardless of damage replacement effects, because it's only altering the damage, not the stats of the creature. There are replacement effects of that nature, but they will specifically state, creature has base power XX, or anthem effects that can give your board plus X plus X. Anthem effects are static abilities, and not replacement effects. Another topic I want to tackle is Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight. How would she work? Well, her prevention effect works similarly to Valkmira. So if you have a stack of damage replacement effects coming your way, you would order it in the same manner. Opponent swings at you with a 10-10 with Emancipation and Furnace of Wrath on board, and you can't afford to lose Gisela, so you opt not to block. How would that work? Well, you would order it so Gisela's prevention effects happens first, nerfing the damage down to 5. Then, the rest of them would go off, allowing you to choose the order, which in this case, either one will bring it up to 30 damage. Remember, you can only prevent the damage assigned. After that, whatever happens, happens. I would also like to mention that Gisela is great against any one damage pinging effects like Mana Barbs or Prodigal Sorcerer, because the rules make it so one damage is reduced to zero. So any replacement effects wouldn't take place, so suck my dick, Gears and Starn. Which takes me on another tangent about how some replacement effects can completely blunt other ones. Cards like Gears and Starn care about you dealing exactly one damage, but if you have damage multipliers or replacements, then that ability is shut down entirely. Now, another synergy that can get some people's minds in a bunch is a card like Taralf God of Fury, who lets you deal excess damage elsewhere from non-combat sources. How would that work? Well. Because of how damage is assigned and dealt, and because Toroff's ability can be put on the stack, it would play out differently than, say, a creature with Trample. If you have a 1-1 creature on board with Toroff out, or if your opponent has the 1-1 creature, and you cast Lightning Bolt, you would assign 3 damage to that creature. State-based actions would come into effect, so Emancipation would trigger, turning that 3 into 9. Now, because it dealt 8 excess damage, Toroff's ability triggers, letting you choose where to direct that damage. There are no more creatures on board, so you direct it right at your opponent's face. Same deal, state-based actions check that conditions are met, and now that 8 damage becomes 24. How Toroff's ability works is it kind of brings back the old ruling of damage being on the stack, because it's the damage is being caused by his ability, it's not combat. And if you had, if you had, say, Boros Reckoner on board and a way to give it indestructible, you can just keep having it hit itself 
like a confused Pokemon infinitely until it gets to an unrealistic number and throw it at your opponents due to its ability being triggered by damage dealt. So you have Boros Reckoner on board, you've got Fire Emancipation, you know, you ping your own Reckoner for one damage, that one damage becomes three, that three damage becomes nine, that nine damage becomes 27, and so on and so forth, until you finally decide, okay, I'm going to throw it at you now. So to wrap this up, I hope I explained this all in a way that makes the most sense. Replacement effects can get really complicated, because even the comprehensive rules have many sub-rules that explain the steps and actions throughout all the different interactions. But I wanted to kind of take it all and compress it in a way that's a bit simpler to understand. Like, it's still a complicated thing to try and explain, but there are ways of explaining it that's a little less grueling. <laughs> but if you'd like to discuss it, catch me outside or in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to brainstorm and share thoughts. And without further ado, I bid thee farewell.